Hi. Um, oh, yeah, it's quite hard after a build-up like that. The magical mark. Well, I'm not going to do anything magical. I just, I just talk probably. It's very hard. It's very hard to know what level the expectation should be at. I want you to be excited, but at the same time. You shouldn't expect too much. This will just be, it'll be good. It, it won't be shit, but it might not be. We'll just see what happens. You know, I am, um, I'm British people. You know what British people, we're very apologetic people. I got this from my dad. My dad's philosophy of life was basically expect a fairly shit life. And then, you know, then if you have a sort of not too shit life, you're happy. And it has, that has stood me in good stead. My dad was always trying to sort of um, soften the blows of life. I remember um, coming home from school and my dad said, would you rather? Father Christmas didn't exist, or your mum was dead, right? And, um, I know, <laughs> what are you going to say to that? Well, I'd rather Father Christmas didn't exist. Right, he said, good news. And there you are, you see, um, <laughs> softening the blows. <laughs> uh, and I kind of feel that as a society, as a world, we're losing that. We're losing the habit of expecting, you know, fairly reasonable things. Everything is hype now. Everything is meant to be the best thing in the world. You know, I saw, how is this for excessive advertising? I saw a magazine in the shop. It said the three sex secrets that will change everything. I mean, really? Change everything? I'm having lunch with my brother tomorrow. Is that off now? So I have to call him and say, sorry, mate, I'm going to have to cancel. Apparently a blowjob is twice as good with an ice cube in your mouth. Of course not. I, um, yeah, I did buy the magazine. It can't hurt to, uh, um, it goes in the lady's mouth. Anyway, uh, so... <laughs> I, just in case anyone's thinking I'd like more information, you wouldn't put it in your own mouth. That'd be, it'd be the same experience, but you'd be cold and uncomfortable. So I am. Uh, <laughs> normally, I'm not very rude. What's happened to me? Oh dear! It's being Australia. Australian, you're such rude fuckers, basically. Yeah. In Britain, I'm from Britain. I have to be so careful all the time. You come to Australia, you can say anything. Uh, and no, I mean not anything. The C word tends to be a problem. That's where I normally. That is the cut-off point. <laughs> I nearly said it there when I said cut-off point. The, uh, the, that, um, that does tend to be. It's funny, really. I would say that basically no word can really be more offensive than that. I mean, they're all just words. It's arbitrary what words mean. It's just something about the sound. The C word does make people go, oh, no, you never say that. But really, it's just a word. It's no different from saying frisbee, really. It, um, <laughs> of course, the context makes a huge difference. <laughs> Had a bit of a mix-up in a park once. But you see what I mean? <laughs> uh, um, you know, but in terms of actual uh, meaning... Oh, I love Australia. <laughs> Mind you, I don't know, it's easy to sort of, if you're British, it's easy to say, oh, you guys, you're so relaxed, Australia's so... And it's not always true. Um, certainly getting into Australia is a real challenge. It remains... A, I, every year, I've come to Australia four years in a row, every year, customs is... Perth is the worst. I very nearly wasn't allowed into Perth. They're obsessed with nuts. Got any nuts? Got any... Fr it's incredible. That was the first question, the first thing anyone ever said to me. All this, like, welcoming Western Australia. Come to Western Australia. You'll be at home in Western. And then the first thing anyone ever uttered to me, got any nuts? And it's just... It's not a question that you're normally prepared for. When you're, uh, you know, after t uh, 24 hours in the air, or whatever it is, Melbourne to Perth. A long way, anyway. You know, uh, <laughs> you know it felt like 24 hours. Tr uh, got any nuts? Got any... And, of course, you know what it's like. You do get a guilty conscience. You know you haven't got any nuts or fruit. I mean, it's not the kind of thing we normally ask in Britain. In Britain, the security people are more concerned with guns and knives and what have you. Um, <laughs> but as soon as someone in a uniform says, got any nuts, got any fruit, you start... A part of you does think, oh, shit, maybe I do have a stray mango here somewhere. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'm harbouring a couple of limes. <laughs> oh, God. I think, um... I mean... What a great laugh there, I mean, <laughs> well over. After the, the, the laugh had died out, someone suddenly went, ha, ha, wow. 20 seconds, that's good. It's, most people are laughing at the punchlines. If a few people can fill in in between, that's really handy for you. <laughs> it's a, this is a team effort. Um, I think um, Perth is maybe just, is anyone, I shouldn't think so, is anyone from Perth? Oh, yeah. Would you say it is full of, uh, unusually full of maniacs, Perth? Yeah, <laughs> nearly everyone I met in Perth was mad. I mean, it's a lovely place, but on my first day in Perth, I was nearly involved in a car crash. Um, in the ta I was in a taxi, and, it was, they nearly and the, my taxi driver went mad, and he wound down the window and started um, 
He had quite an odd accent. He was a wog, basically, as you would say here, which I'm only saying because, um, again, in Britain, if you said that, that would be your career over. Whereas, because um, it means something, in Britain, it means something different. Anyway, he was, uh, whatever, I don't know where the hell he was from, but he started shouting at this other taxi driver, hey, you're a gay man, I fuck you, hey, you remember, remember? He kept saying, you remember, I fuck you, don't you remember? You're gay, I fuck you. Um, and, yeah, I thought your argument is quite muddled, really, sir. I mean, uh, you know, like, for one thing, I would never condone... You can't just shout, you're gay, in this day and age. You can't be homophobic. But if you are going to, to then claim that you've had sex with him yourself, well... <laughs> uh, you're really weakening your position in the argument. And, uh, um, and the other guy was giving him a wanker sign, and they were honking their horns, all horrible stuff. I mean, as I say, this is Perth. I just wasn't expecting it. I live in London. In London, they would still be fairly good friends, by London standards, but, like, in Western Australia. And then, um, my taxi driver started looking to the future. He started saying, hey, I fuck your whole family next week. Next week. <laughs> I come round, I fuck all your family next week. I said, brilliant. Such a sh not immediately, but next week it will happen. <laughs> I I was impressed for a psycho, at least he had a time scale in mind, yeah. <laughs> it would probably be, we'll aim for 7.30, it could be nearer 8 by the time we get there. Oh, oh dear. Deary me. Yeah, still, it's a wonderful, uh, it's a wonderful place, Australia, as I say. And I must say, um, you've been very nice, I've got to go in a minute, this is the nature of the show. You're, you're there, then you're gone, but you've been, um, yeah, really nice crowd. It's been quite sort of um, fun, really. Comedy's it's really fun doing this. People imagine it's really terrifying. People always say, oh, you're so brave, which is nonsense, really. A lot of people are much braver than me. A nurse said to me, I couldn't, you're so brave. But imagine, a nurse is much more courageous than a comedian. Imagine having to give hope to someone that's ill. I'd be terrible as a nurse. If someone was saying to me, am I dying? Just tell me, just tell me, am I going to die? I'd find it very hard not to say, you do look pasty. Yeah, I wouldn't... Uh... <laughs> I wouldn't start watching 24, put it that way. Yeah, it, it kind of... <laughs> yeah. I had this guy, I'll, I shall leave you with this, but this, um, the most enthusiastic Aussie I've ever met, even by Australian standards. You know, as you get some Aussies that just call you a legend. You're a fucking legend, mate, legend. So well, this guy grabbed me and he kept calling me a legend and he said, you're the bravest man I've ever met. He said, you're... It was nonsense. And I said to him, I bet you've done something braver uh, than being a comedian. And it turned out this guy was a bungee jumper. He was an extreme sports fanatic. And he had bungee in Adelaide, he bungee jumped naked for the Good Friday appeal. And he was saying to me, I, which one of us is brave? I said to him, I would never in a million years go to Adelaide. And this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> so it's all about perspective, I suppose. Ah, <laughs> uh, there you go. Uh, my name is Mark Watson. Thank you very much. See you later. Have a good night. <laughs>